today we'll be doing on the clavicle and we'll be doing everything you need to know about the clavicle but before we go into the clavicle i want to be showing you something very important because you know that the clavicle is part of the upper limb it is present in the shoulder so we need to know how this upper limb gets origin you know and other parts of the body so it's not like I want to teach you embryology, but I was just want to show you how this upper limb is originating from the body. Then we now talk about parts of the upper limb and we'll start from the clavicle specifically. So let me show you an image here. This image. I will just give you a sketch. This image here, for example, you know, we've got three gem layers in the human body. This gem layer is the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. The ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. The ectoderm is the outer layer. The mesoderm is the middle layer and the endoderm is the inner layer. These are the gem layers in the human body. Now during intrauterine life, during intrauterine life, this stage is present and in the ectoderm we have what is called the neural crest cell in the tube. There is a folding in the ectoderm. This folding has what is called the neural crest cell at this region. Neural crest cell at this folding. This folding is called the neural groove. The neural groove. Right? So this point here, these things, small small things out here is called the neural crest cell. Now, as the week is going back during, you know, in traditional life, as the week is going back, this neural crest cell is going to come together. They will join together where the groove is. They will join together now. When they come together, they will close up and they will form what is called a neural tube. They form a neural tube. That is when this groove, these two groove here, is joined together, they will form a neural tube. It will now be something like this. This point here is called the neural, it's called the neural tube, and the neural crest cell will just be at the sides of the neural tube. That is when they are close together. They will be at the side of the neural tube, and there is also what is called the notochord. You know that during intrauterine life, there the notochord will be present. So the notochord will now be under the neural tube so this is about the development during the intrauterine life of the what happened in the egg to them and you know migrate to the mix to them and during this time as the week is going back again what is happening is that there will be a plate formation of a plate at the side formation of a plate at the side Usually, it forms in the mesoderm, that is the middle layer, during uterine life. Formation of the plate, this plate is called the lateral plate, mesoderm, lateral plate, mesoderm, right? Lateral plate, mesoderm, because it is located laterally, that is away from the middle part. The middle part is where the neural tube and the notochord is. Then away from that part is the lateral plate mesoderm. The next one, there is about three plates that is going to form. The first one is called the lateral plate. The second one that will form is called the paraaxial plate mesoderm. Paraaxial plate mesoderm to be formed between the lateral plate and the neural tube or the notochord. It's called the paraaxial
and the last one the last plate that is going to be formed is called the intermediate plate mesoderm it is called intermediate because it is present between what it is present between the lateral plate and the paraxial plate mesoderm so this one is called as the intermediate plate mesoderm So what am I driving in? Why am I telling you this? Okay, why I'm telling you this is because you know the various parts of the body don't just develop during intrauterine life. Everything don't just come. It comes from inner cell mass, then from another stage to stage, then it comes to the germ layer, and then from there to now function to develop into you know particular function, and particular parts in the body. So once it gets to this level where the plate is going to be produced in the muscle, then we are going to have the lateral plate mesoderm is now going to develop into something else. So what is this lateral plate going to develop into? The lateral plate is going to develop into what is called the upper limb. The lateral plate develop into what is called the upper limb and the lower limb. Upper limb and the lower limb. Then the intermediate mesoderm is going to develop into what? The intermediate mesoderm, the intermediate plate mesoderm is going to develop into the genito urinary system. Genito urinary system. Now, the last one, which is called the paraxial plate mesoderm. It's going to develop into what? It's going to develop into the skeletal system. So this is the reason why I just wanted to show you how the upper limb develops. So now we now know that the upper limb develops from what is called the lateral plate mesoderm, which is you know developed at the mesoderm during intrauterine life. So you know that the upper limb is made up of several components and bones and muscle nerves that is forming the upper limb. But now as we want to discuss this upper limb, we are going to discuss about this in you know section by section. And in today I want to be showing you the clavicle. And in the clavicle we'll be covering everything about the clavicle. What we'll be doing today in the clavicle, which is part of the upper limb, is introduction to the clavicle. Side determination of the clavicle. Next thing we'll be doing as the peculiarities of the clavicle. After the peculiarities, we'll now be dealing on, you know, let's say the osteology of bony landmark of the clavicle. Talk about the attachment and then finally bring out tutorial into closure by talking about the clinical parts of the clavicle. How is the clavicle applied clinical? So this is what we're going to be covering in today's tutorial. So the introduction to the clavicle. Let's see the introduction to the clavicle. Now, the introduction is there is that the clavicle is the only long bone in the human body that lies horizontally. The long bone in the human body, long bone in the human body that lies horizontally. It is what an elongated S-shaped bone. Elongated S-shaped bone. The clavicle is an elongated S-shaped bone. It is the only long bone that lies horizontally. It is present in the shoulder region. It is present in the shoulder region. 
it receives the weight of the upper limb the weight of the upper limb via the curaco clavicular joint we we'll get into the joint in no time the curaco clavicular joint is the joint that is holding you know, the clavicle and the coracoid process of the scapula together so that is why it is called as the curaco clavicular joint so the introduction there is just that it is a long bone of the human body that lies horizontally in the shoulder it is an elongated s shape because if you look at the clavicle closely you see that it is s in shape what well, right it is s in shape and it is present in the shoulder region that is where it is present it it receives the weight of the upper limb via the cracoclavicular ligament and does what transmit it transmit it to the axial skeleton via what via the stenoclavicular joints via the stenoclavicular joints this is what is known as the introduction to the clavicle the introduction to the clavicle next we are going to discuss about the side determination of the clavicle if you want to discuss or if you want to look at the side determination of the clavicle, there are three important you know, anatomical terms that is being used. And if this term is used, I think side determination of any bone is very easy. Let's say for the clavicle, we are going to see three side determination using this approach. For the anatomical terminology, we have what is called the media and lateral posterior and anterior and we can also use there are several of them there are several of them you can also use inferior and superior and lots of them so but i just like using this um three approach to determine any size of muscle sorry any size of bone so for the clavicle, let's say we want to use media on lateral as well as posterior and then anterior. What is the side determination? One of them is, if you check the clavicle cl closely, the lateral end is smooth. and the media end is quadrangular you can call it quadrangular or quadrilateral because the media end is quadrilateral and it's kind of the shape is kind of in four corner just to articulate with the manubrio stena you know to form a joint there stenoclavicular joint and that is why that point is quadrilateral and the articulating facet of the manubrial sternum is also the shape is also like that so if, if it does not possess this this kind of shape you cannot articulate with it and that is why it is called a quadrilateral shape then for the lateral end it is smooth because the acromion process of the <coughs> clavicle sorry the acromion process of the scapula is smooth and that is why the lateral end that is articulating with the acromion process is smooth that is one side determination you can see that laterally or medially it, the end is what smooth and then for the media side the end is quadrilateral or quadrangular if you want to shake it posteriorly and anteriorly if you want to shake it posteriorly and anteriorly posteriorly we shake the clavicle when the clavicle is curved throughout it will shaft or throughout it will course or length because of that curvature the clavicle is divided into three parts 
one part, second and the third part. So because of that curvature, one part is usually concave and the other part is usually convex, right? So for the posterior surface, or sorry, the posterior border of the clavicle, if you want to use that side determination, the posterior border is concave, posteriorly concave, posteriorly. And triorly, that's in the front. We've done all that in our in the introductory part. And triorly, it is convex. Convex, that means the front side of the clavicle is pushing forward. Then posteriorly, it is concave. It means that it is like the, the curve shape is going inside. It's not going outside, but it's kind of pushing inside. And that's the meaning of convex. That is for posterior and then for anterior. For posterior, it's usually concave. That's the side determination of the clavicle. And then for anterior, it is usually convex, right? Then let us see another side determination. We can use inferior and superior. Inferior and superior. For inferior, we see that the inferior surface of the clavicle is usually rough because it contains some, you know, like tobacco and rich for the attachment of ligament as well as muscle, right? So because of this roughing surface, we can see that the inferior surface is rough. That's a side determination, very good side determination, that the inferior surface is rough. The superior surface is smooth or subcutaneous. So by this, we have completed about the side determination of the club. In whichever way that you want to use medial or lateral, you can see the medial and the lateral and then anterior and posterior. Anterior and posterior is usually used to determine the borders of the bone. For example, we are talking about clavicles. So the anterior and posterior border is one side is convex as the anterior border. And usually it is convex in the medial to third. And for the posterior, it is concave. Usually it is concave in the medial to third. And we'll talk about that when we want to discuss about the osteology. So that is about the side determination of the clavicle. Next, we are going to see what is called as the peculiarity of the clavicle. Why does the clavicle have some peculiarities? It has some peculiarities because some other bone in the human body does not have what it has. That is why it is peculiar. So let us see some of these peculiarities that the clavicle has. One of these peculiarities is nothing but it is the first bone to start ossification. Peculiarities. Of clavicle. One of these is it is the first bone in the human body to start ossification. Because it is the first bone in the human body, that is that is great peculiarity. Because it is not the second, it is not the third, like it's actually the first person to you know start developing in the human body. So that's a big peculiarity about the clavicle. Number two, no any other bone that um, no any other bone in the human body, you know, ossifies from a membrane, but the clavicle does. So it's a great peculiarity. It ossify from a membrane. It ossify from a membrane. It doesn't contain 
any medullary cavity. It is occasionally pierced by the middle supraclavicular nail. So these are some of the peculiarities. The first bone to start ossification just fires from a membrane. It does not have any medullary cavity. It is occasionally pierced by the supraclavicular nail. It is subcutaneous throughout. The clavicle is subcutaneous throughout. Throughout the whole shaft. Now this is the clavicle. It is divided into one part, two part, and the third part, right? And it has what is called two ends. This is one end and this is another end. This end that is going away from the middle part of the body is called the lateral end. And this part that is going into the middle part of the body is called as the media end, right? So it has got two end lateral media and what a shaft, an intervening shaft. Now this shaft now is subcutaneous throughout the whole length and that is a good peculiarity about the clavicle that the whole shaft is what, subcutaneous. Now these are some of the peculiarities that the clavicle possesses, right? Next one is the osteology of the clavicle. Osteology, there's nothing much to see there because we have already discussed everything you need to know about the osteology. Osteology has to do with the bony parts or the bony landmass that is you know, present in any bone. Let's say for the clavicle, the clavicle has two ends, lateral and medial. The lateral end is called the acromial end. And the medial end is called what? the sternal end. The acromial end is going to articulate with the acromion process of the scapula to form the acromial clavicular joint. It articulates with the acromial end of the scapula. Let's say this is the acromial end of the scapula. And this is the acromial end of the clavicle. This point of articulation is what is called as the acromioclavicular joint. So this end now is a is a landmark, is a, is a bony landmark that is called acromia end. And there's another end called the media end which articulates with the sternum. Let's say for example that this is just then. These points that articulate with the manubro sternum is called the sternal clavicular joint. That is another important landmark. And then we also see that the clavicle has on two borders and two surfaces, anterior border and posterior border. The anterior border is convex on its medial to top. The posterior border is concave on its what, medial to top. But the lateral one top, the anterior border is what, concave and the posterior border is what, convex for the lateral one top. Why it is called what lateral one top is because the point of curvature where the clavicle curves into an L shape at the lateral end is shorter than that of the word media and this point here is shorter than that of the media end. That is why as the breakdown of one, two, three, this side becomes more, this side 
is medial so it becomes two third of the whole of the clavicle but the lateral side now is now one third because it's just one small part so the lateral side is one third at the point of curvature and the medial third is two third so if you want to discuss about this in different parts let's say you want to discuss about the lateral one third it has two surfaces and two borders the anterior surface is well concave because it's going inside and the posterior surface is well convex. The surface is just a superior surface and inferior surface. The superior surface, which is usually at this upper part, the superior surface is what? Superior surface is some continuous. It is smooth. And the inferior surface well, presents two important landmarks in the you know, shoulder region two important landmarks which is called as the conoid tobacco which is usually this one yeah conoid tobacco is present here and the next one is called as the trapezoid bridge trapezoid bridge so these are the two important landmarks that is present in the lateral one third and true border posterior borders superior surface inferior surface the superior surface is subcutaneous and smooth the inferior surface contains what conoid tobacco on the trapezial group this tobacco is used for the attachment of what ligaments that joins together to form a very important ligament that is called as the coracoclavicular ligament now for the medial two third which is from the whole of this length to the sternum which is called the medial two third it has two surfaces and four borders it has two surfaces and four borders we have the superior and inferior surface as usual but the borders is we have anterior and posterior border and then we have superior and inferior border anterior posterior border superior and inferior border the landmarks that is usually present in the medial two thirds superiorly it is smooth and then inferiorly it contains what is called a groove called as the subclavius groove groove at the inferior aspect that's what is called a groove right here somewhere here called as the subclavial groove at the lateral end of the medial two third, because if we want to divide this medial two third now, we still have medial and lateral because one of the side will be going closer to the midline, the other side will be going away from the midline. So if we want to divide it into two now. This lateral end of the medial two third presents what is called as the nutrient foramen of the clavicle. Nutrient foramen of the clavicle. And at the medial end, close to the medial, close to the sternum, presents what is called an oval impression for the attachment of the ligament called as the costoclavicular ligament. So these are the various landmarks which is present in the clavicle. For the lateral one third is the conoid tobacco, the trapezoid bridge which is present in the inferior surface. The superior surface is subcutaneous and smooth. The anterior border is concave and the posterior border is well convex. That's for the lateral one third. For the medial two third, it has four borders, anterior border, posterior border, superior border and inferior border and two surface, superior surface and what is called as inferior surface. Then, the inferior surface of the medial two thirds contain what is called a trapezoid groove. Right at the lateral end of this medial two third or lateral to the trapezoid groove is called as there's a foramen there that is called as the nutrient foramen of the clavicle, which is present somewhere around there. And lastly, there's an oval impression just at the medial part, medial to the top clavius groove, called as a attachment where the attachment of the costoclavicular ligament is going to attach 
and that is why the clavicle the imperial surface is usually rough and the superior surface is smooth next we are going to see the attachments of the clavicle the attachments of the clavicle the attachment usually contain the muscle that is attaching the clavicle the ligaments attaching to the clavicle the capsule which is attaching to the clavicle sometimes the bursa which acts as a cushion also attaching to any bone but in this case the clavicle so let's see the attachment attachments of muscles we're going to see this attachment in section first let's see the medial sorry the lateral one type. let's see the lateral one type. the lateral one type, at this point I try one thing at this point here, which is called as the anterior border. The anterior border usually give attachment to the muscle called as the deltoid muscle. The deltoid muscle usually originate at the anterior border at the media at the lateral one third of the clavicle. Anterior border on the lateral one third of the clavicle. That's where one of the fibers of the deltoid muscle is going to arise and so the deltoid is arising from the lateral one third anterior deltoid is arising there posterior posterior is what is called as the trapezius muscle this is your this is the posterior border so at this point is your trapezius muscle the trapezial muscle also have several fibers, but one of the fibers, the superior fibers of trapezius, is arising. No, it's not arising. It's attaching. Superior fibers, the superior attachment or superior insertion of the trapezius is inserting on the lateral one third, on the posterior border. Lateral one third, on the posterior border. Trapezius muscle is inserting. And the posterior border. At the end, where the joint is formed, which is called as the acromia end, is a capsule. The joint capsule will be attached to the acromion in that forms the acromion clavicular joint with the clavicle there will be what is called a joint capsule is attached there and finally is the articular disc that is what is attaching at the lateral one third first the deltoid which is attaching on the anterior side of the lateral one third trapezoid inserting on the posterior surface of the lateral one third the articular disc is attached on the points where the clavicle and the acromion meet to form a joint as well as the what the joint capsule which acts as what a lubricator right now let's see the ligaments attaching at the lateral one third the ligaments are one of them is the coraco clavicular ligament. Where is the coraco clavicular ligament coming from? The coraco clavicular ligament is coming from the coracoid process of the scapula. I'm going to give you a sketch diagram of the clav of this.
this point here is the coracoid process of the scapula so there is a ligament coming from this coracoid process and attaching to the clavicle like this it is called as the coraco clavicular ligament and this ligament is not attached alone it is attached as union of two other ligaments one is coming from the conoid tobacco the other one is coming from the trapezoid tobacco or the trapezoid bridge the one from the conoid tobacco is called the conoid ligament the other one from the trapezoid bridge is called the trapezoid ligament these two ligaments join together with the coracoclavicular ligament to form the coracoclavicular ligament right so this ligament is going to hold the coracoid process of the scapula to the clavicle in place so that is the ligament arising from the coracoid places conoid and trapezium let us see the medial suture the muscles, the ligament that is attaching to the medial suture. The medial suture anteriorly, anteriorly is, a, is one of the fibers of pectoralis major muscle. Pectoralis major muscle. The pectoralis major muscle have you know, multiple fibers and one of the fibers usually called as the superior fibers is arising from the anterior border of the medial to third of the clavicle right so that is where the pectoralis major arises next muscle is called as the sternocleidomastoid muscle The sternocleidomastoid muscle is arising from the superior surface of the clavicle, usually in its medial parts. In the medial two-third, at the medial parts of the medial two-third, is where the sternocleidomastoid muscle is arising superiorly at the superior surface, somewhere around here. That's why the sternocleidomastoid. As the name implies, this muscle has origin from the sternum and as well as from the clavicle. And then the all one goes and inside on the mastoid process. And the mastoid process. That is why the name is called as sternocleidomastoid muscle. Next muscle arising from the posterior surface is called as the sternohyoid muscle. sternohyoid muscle is arising from the posterior surface of the medial tube of the clavicle so these are the muscles basic muscles arising from the medial tube of the clavicle let's see the capsule and the articular disc where the clavicle meets with the sternum which is called as the sternoclavicular joint there will be attachment of the fibrous joint capsule there will be fibrous joint capsule attached to this margin and what the articular disc this articular disc is attached to the posterior superior aspect of the sternum and of the clavicle somewhere around the posterior superior aspect that's where the articular disc is going to get attached while the fibrous capsule is going to get attached to the whole length of the articulating disc so that is basically the capsule as well as the joint discs that is arising from the medial to the ligaments
the ligament is the costal clavicular ligament. Costal clavicular ligament. The costal clavicular ligament is arising from the costal surface of the rib between the ribs is the coastal surface. The rib is somewhere here. So between the rib, the coastal clavicular ligament is going to arise like this, and then it's going to get attached medial to the subclavian groove. That is where it is going to get attached. So it is called as the coastal clavicular ligament from the coastal process to the clavicle. It's going to hold the clavicle in place with the you know thoracic region that is why it is called as the costal clavicular ligament another muscle is called as the subclavius muscle arising from the cartilaginous part of the first rib and inserting on the subclavian groove this groove is going to house the subclavius muscle and the subclavius muscle acts as well a cushion to the clavicle and then at the medial parts medial to the subclavius groove is where you find the clavipectoral fascia the clavipectoral fascia Is going to get attached on the media side so this is basically the attachment that is present in the clavicle for the lateral one you have deltoid trapezius then you have the joint capsule and the articular disc then we have the what the ligament called as the coracoclavicular ligament the coracoclavicular ligament is formed as a result of two other ligaments called as the conoid ligament and the trapezial ligament for the medial side, we have anteriorly the pectoralis major muscle, the superior fibers is attaching to this point. Posteriorly, we have the sternohyoid muscle attaching to the posterior aspect. For the superior surface, we have what is called as the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Next, we have the dix. Dix is arising from the capsule, the joint where the Articulating surface is that is where the disc is going to arise. But for the sternal end, the disc is arising at the posterior superior aspect of this articulating surface. And next is the subclavius muscle, which is arising from the first rib, which is coastal part of the first rib, and getting inserted on the one subclavian groove. And the next one is the costoclavicular ligament and the clavipectoral fascia. This is basically the attachment that is present in the clavicle. Finally, we're going to discuss about the clinical anatomy, clinical application of the clavicle. So, what basically is uh, what? Uh, is the effect of the clavicle in clinical what is basically the effect what can clavicle cause in the body that would not result to any clinical implication so let's see clinical clavicle they're basically ways in which uh, the clavicle is a bone so it's going to get fractured as a result of falling on the outstretch and you know as um, let's say indirect violence something that you don't know that occurs so you maybe you fall as a result of kicking a stone kicking your leg on a stone on the ground or maybe fighting or maybe you know the kind of work you do maybe pulling out objects that might result in you know, fracture of the clavicle if the effect is too much because the clavicle is what is not transmitting the weight of the upper limb to the axial skeleton so if for example there is a fall on the outstretch and it's going to cause fracture to the clavicle 
and this fracture usually occur at the point where there is a curvature point where there is a curvature and called as the medial two-third and lateral one-third the medial two-third and lateral one-third is the point where the clavicle is going to get curved into that uh, shape and that point is usually the weakest point in the clavicle so if there's any fall like that it's going to affect that area and it's going to get a fracture so that is usually the point of fracture of the clavicle and when this occur the lateral end is going to displace downward and you know it's going to you know compress the whole upper limb it may cause some other you know effect to the upper limb like let's say pinching or parastasia to the upper limb sometimes you might get shooting pain as a result of fraction and you know compression of this lateral one third because the trapezius muscle alone cannot hold this lateral displacement of the clavicle so it might cause impingement to the other parts of the upper limb so this fracture occurs at the point between medial two third and lateral one third that is usually the weakest point and the other one is called cleidocranial dysostosis Cleidocranial dysostosis is usually, usually occur as a result of an imperfectly developed clavicle. Imperfectly developed clavicle. We call cause what is called the cleidocranial dysostosis. Let's say, for example, the clavicle ossifies, you know, between fifth to sixth week of intrauterine life, and during this ossification, there is what is called as the primary center and what is called as the secondary center. So this primary center is usually two for the clavicle. Usually two and it is located at the body or the shaft of the clavicle. So if there's a defect on this primary center, there's a defect on this primary center, it's going to cause what is called as imperfectly developed clavicle. Right? But the secondary center usually, you know, ossifies at the age of 19 to 28 years at the sternal end. There may be a secondary center at the chromia end, but it's usually present in the world, the sternal end. It usually ossifies at 19 to 28 years. But for the main ossification of the clavicle, it ossifies from a primary center in the middle at fifth to you no know, sixth week of intrauterine life. So if there's any defect at this point, it's going to cause what is called as cleidocranial dysostosis. That means the clavicle will not even develop because the main point where the thing is developing from is already being inflamed or infected. So it's not even going to develop and that is going to cause this condition called cleidocranial dysostosis. And when this cleidocranial dysosis is present in an individual, the contraction of the pectoralis major muscle in that individual is going to bring the two limbs, the two upper limbs together. That means the two shoulder region can be touching each other if the pectoralis major muscle contract. So this is basically the clinical effect of clinical anatomy of the clavicle.